All right. Good morning. Um, I am uh, Chuck Bargeron um, with the University of Georgia Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health. Um, I'm one of the uh, creators and, and I guess the manager of the EdMaps um, project and all of its sub projects. Um, and uh, Laura Van Riper had asked me to to come on and do set up this webinar and go over how the um, advanced query tool works. And so I have got some canned examples that I'm going to show you that um, that were all tested and double tested and all worked um, as of an hour ago. So hopefully we'll all work now. Um, and then I will open it up to any questions. Um, you know, primarily focused on the advanced query tool. But if there's other questions related to EdMaps in general, then I'll be glad to, to field those as well. Um, so for those not familiar with the advanced query tool, um, it is a feature that's in EdMaps to basically pick up any of the, of the questions you would like to ask the database that are not you know, just general distribution maps. And so to access that page, um, either from EdMaps Midwest or the EdMaps homepage, you click on the tools and training tab up here at the top. And then advanced query tool is the next to the last option under, um, under database tools. And so if you click on that, then you get a page that looks like, um, that looks like this with a bunch of blank fields. And what you can do on this page is any combination of, of, these, um, of these fields. So, you know, just for, for a quick example, um, I know that um, Monica Chandler with, um, with Minnesota Department of Ag has a fair number of, picture, a fair number of reports um, in EdMaps. So I can go on and say, okay, well, I want to look at all of Monica's records. And I do a search, and there we go. We get the number of records. There's 342. Um, 341 of those have a lat long to go along with it, um, and that's and those records total 948 acres. Um, you can zoom in just like you would on any other EdMaps map, and and see where those records are. Um, you can click on them um, to get more information, and then. You know, click on them again, and it takes you to the to the actual record. Um, the download options: the CSV, the KML, the GPX, and the shapefile options are all here. Um, if you have not used those recently, um, when you click on that that record now, it's going to pop up and say you will rec receive an email with instructions to download the requested content. And every 15 minutes, the server runs and processes those requests. And you will get an email that looks like this um, that says, you know, we've repaired, prepared the uh, data download, and here's the link to download it, and that that link will be active for another 30 days. Um, and in that process, if you had trouble with that process in the past, that process has been um, changed the way it runs. And, and now it, it, um, it runs. And if it doesn't run, we get an error message letting us know that it didn't run for some reason. But it runs every 15 minutes. So within about 15 minutes of you getting, of you making the request, then you should get the email. Um, to back up one, um, if I said, okay, well, I want to look at everything that Monica did, but I also want to look at everything um, that Laura has reported, then I can get that results. Laura doesn't have very many reports, but but we can see it added a few to what we had before. Um, and then again, all of those same options are available. And you can keep adding people if there's a, a group of folks that you're looking for, um, you know, when they that all collected data on, on, on a group. This is just verified data. Um, anything that has not been verified, um, checked off through the system will not, will not show up here. Um, 
another another query of, of interest is let's say okay i want to look at everything entered since january everything that was entered in the ad maps since january 1st for um for minnesota so you choose january 1st up here you choose minnesota you run the query it returns the um 3, results and and maps them as well um one interesting um thing you can see so it was like 3300 um, reports entered you can come over here and do when the observation date was just to kind of see okay what was actually observed and it's interesting that it's a it's a lower number because there's been data that's been entered um since january um, of this year that was actually observed prior to to January. So you get a smaller number when you come in and look at um, at the number of records observed versus the number of records entered. Um, another, you know, query of interest, let's say, you know, okay, I want to look at um, Oriental Bittersweet. Um, this, this species list it includes everything in EdMaps, um, and you have to, you, you start typing the, the name and it will do the, um, you know, it'll do the search. You can search by scientific name or by common name and it will, um, it will populate that field. After you start typing three characters, then it'll start looking for what you want, but if you keep on typing more then you'd be more likely to. To get to your answer quicker and so okay I, I click on that and and that gives me okay well here's all of the oriental bittersweets records that are in um in minnesota and as you can see they're kind of um clustered obviously along along a couple of areas um one thing that this really can be useful for is finding you know a, a quick way without especially if you're just looking within your state um you know where where some of the hotspot populations are without having to dig through the data for for the surrounding states um you know that also can could be limited by county um i think it's um so if you put in ramsey county then you're going to come in and you're going to get a, even a smaller set of the data just just that are located within that county um if you go back, you know, sometimes it's going to to save your results here. So like state was saved on that. But let's say, you know, I want to while I'm here, instead of going and and digging through the find the uh, the full distribution map. OK, I want to I want to look at Oriental Bittersweet um, distribution nationwide. So you can go back, make sure state is not chosen here and get all. 17,000 results for um, for Oriental Bittersweet, you know, across the whole U.S. And so, um, you know, same map that you would get on the distribution page. But if you're here and you're looking for some data, um, then a, then another way to um, to to pull it out. Um, you know, a question we get asked a lot. You know, let's say you're doing you do some kind of campaign. And you're you're pushing the public, or you've got a group that's going out and um, and looking for things over a period of time. Um, so let's say you know you ran this campaign in April of this year, and where you were really pushing people to report things. And so you want to see every you know how many records were were reported in April of this year in Minnesota. And so you know, very quickly you can see 163 records. And you can get, you know, kind of distribution of where those are. Um, I mean, we get asked questions a lot related to numbers. And, um, you know, what you quickly see here is the map. But as valuable as the map is, is this first line up here, which is the, the number of records that were, were actually submitted in that time period. Um, so I was just going to go through a few more examples of, of different ways you can look at things. Um, one, one is, okay, well, I, I want to look at, at Minnesota and I want to look at um, everything in Ramsey County. 
And so, okay, well, there's, you know, 3,900 records that, that show up in Ramsey County. I'm around Minneapolis. And so here, as, as you zoom in, can see where all of those records are found. Um, but now let's say, okay, well, what I'm really interested in is the insect reports in Ramsey County. So, okay, I'm going to go back, add insects to the query, and then you you come back and just get the um, the insect records that, that show up in there. And and while I was talking, then the email came in for my request for all of Monica's records. Um, so about you know a little less than about ten minutes since. Um, we made the request, and and now that that email's come in. Um, so while we're you know here and we're looking, okay, well let's say we we want to look at uh, not not insects, but I, I want to see what wildlife reports have come up in in the county, and so you do that, and then okay here here are your sixteen wildlife reports, um, um, you know what some goldfish reports, and then. Um, probably some uh, zebra mussel as well. So so those those are reports. But okay, well, you know, there was a fish report in there and, as well as the zebra mussel. So maybe I should just go back and and look just at um, at mussels. So I go back to category, which is a little um, narrower than than the division is here. And um, I can choose snail, slug, and mussels, and then submit. So, okay, well, there were 16 reports total um, for wildlife in, um, in, in Ramsey County, but, um, but 10 of those were actually, were actually mussels. Um, and because I'm, I'm always interested, you know, in, in some of the work we've done in the, in the Everglades in, um, Okay, well, how many how many snake reports? How many how many um, um, reptile or amphibian reports have we got in um, in in Minnesota? And so let, let's just go in and, and put in reptiles. Oh, and here we go. So there hasn't been any reptiles um, that have been um, been returned in in um, in Minnesota. So that, so you know you you won't always there will be scenarios where you won't. Um, you know, you actually won't get any results. Um, and I'm, and I'm not going to do it as an example, but well, I guess I can, let me just go back and think if I just do Minnesota. So if you just do Minnesota, you're going to get a warning that, um, the query is going to return over 200,000 records. And I think what we've done right now is, um, I think you get an error message when you do this. Um, and it says that to download data sets over 200,000 records, then, um, then contact Rebecca Wallace. And so we put that in there because um, it, it'll, it'll eventually map these um, in, in ideal situations. Uh, all those records will, will ultimately come up. But, um, but the download we found was just too taxing on the, um, on the server. We, you know, if somebody comes in here and refreshes um, that download link and clicks on it multiple times, then it's going to put so much load on the server. And, and there's very few instances where you would really need that many records. And if you do, then it's something we can, we can quickly pull out for you. Um, and I'm going to back up and get out of that. But, um, you know, other things that I, I was thinking, you know, questions that, that may come up. Okay. Well, I want to know what's what's been reported in in Wisconsin since um, since January first. Um, you know, I know there's been some reports in Wisconsin. Let, let's see, you know, how many of those are, are are getting close to close to or along the line, and you can very quickly see that information um, uh, about surrounding states right now because of the fact that country, state, and county. Um, and township are all tied to each other. Um, you know, if you choose Wisconsin here, then this county list is the counties in Wisconsin. If you choose Minnesota here, then this county list becomes the counties in Minnesota. Then that limits us to um, to only be able to do one state or one county. 
um, with the way it's currently set up. Um, uh, one thing that that um, not something I had I had looked at be before, but as I was preparing this, you know, there's an option here for um, for habitat, and so you know, let's let's look at everything that was listed with the roadside habitat, and um, you know, hey, you're going to get eighty four thousand eighty four thousand records that are that are roadside um, roadside records. And so, you know, there, there is some ways to pull out, um, specific information like that from, from the database mm -hmm. and, and really dive deeper into it. Um, and I think probably because that other query was running, um, it's going to take a few minutes for this one to, to pull the data up. Um, but there it goes. It's starting to come in now. Um, so while this is, while this is loading, um, so, you know, going back to the to the previous page on different ways that, that you can look at things, different ways you can query things, um, you know, that this feature is something that has been in EdMaps for a long time. Um, you know, you do have the potential to ask quite crazy questions of it and um, and really slow things down. Um, so it's one of those things that we is there and we publicize it. Um, you know, kind of on an as needed basis, just because, um, you know, it, it's not a functionality that, that every user needs, but, but when you're really trying to dig deep into the data and, and figure out more than just where a species is, um, then it's a, it's a very useful tool. So I guess, do y'all have any questions? Um, I can, I can keep going on this this all day long but if there's specific questions or or um, um, scenarios that that y'all would like um, me to talk about or or um, or questions that it it may should be able to answer and it but it can't currently answer um, then then speak up or type into the um, question box. Um, let me see how I can. Um, I have a question. So for the, the different ways you can download the data, can you talk about those, the different formats a little bit and the pros and cons and, and you know, what kind of data you'll be getting if you, if you download it as a, as a CSV, you're going to get, you know, 50 columns worth of data, things like that. Right. Um, yeah. So the, um, and, and I answered the other question that came in kind of at the same time. Um, so yes, the, um, let me do a query and go back to that page. Um, there's four different formats that, that we made the data available in, um, with the first one being CSV. CSV is comma separated values. Um, that data is just a, it's a text file that um that excel is, is is friendly to open in excel um you are going to get um a lot of of fields um it was originally tied to the um here's here's an example of of what it looks like um this data was originally tied to um the uh, the North American Invasive Species Management Association standards. Um, I think we have updated this where now it's it's more of just kind of a dump of the fields in, in the database. Um, but as you can see, there are a lot of fields. Um, you're going to get a lot of information and um, and there's going to be a lot of fields that are here that you may not have any interest in. Um, and so, you know, the, the quick option is to just go in and, you know, okay, I'm not interested in this section township range quad because there's no data in there um, for any of the records I downloaded. So I'm just going to quickly delete those fields. Um, you know, from time to time we get requests to, to add more fields and, um, and, you know, those, that's something that, that we can, um, 
we'll be glad to address, you know, on a kind of an as needed basis. Um, one, you know, one user recently, for some reason, infested area and, and the units were in gross area and the units were not separated on this download. Um, and so obviously that to do any calculations, you need those separated. So there's little things that fall through the cracks sometime. And um, so that was pointed out to us and, and we updated it and made that um, available. Um, the shapefile in most cases would be the other format you would primarily use. Um, I think because of the way we are writing shape files that you end up getting two layers um, and because I'm on a Mac, I don't have um, our, our map on here, but um, you end up getting two layers, one that is a point layer and one that is a polygon layer. Um, and my understanding is that, you know, you can combine those two in ArcGIS, but the way we have to write them, you can't get um, both of them at the same time in, in one file. Um, KML. And, and Chuck, Chuck, yeah. yeah, just before you move off shape files, just a, a reminder to DNR staff that we do have shape files for the EdMaps data on our internal um, quick themes layers. So if you want to look at invasive species data in, in ArcGIS, um, you don't have to go through the process of downloading it off EdMaps Midwest. You can just open up ArcMap, go to quick themes, search for invasives, and there's several. Um, there's an aquatic invasives layer and a terrestrial invasives layer, and you can open those up, and it's got the points and polygons on there. Right, right, and that is that's updated. Is it nightly or is it weekly? Uh, I think every four days. Okay. Um, and and so yeah, so you know, I, I would you're going to get a better a better shape file probably through that direct through that interface through your your arc map than you would through through this. Um, it's, it's hard to write shape files, um, on a server the way we're doing it. And so there's some limitations there. Um, KML is the, um, is the arc Google earth format. So if you're using the Google earth, um, software and you want to be able to map things on it, then, then that is the file format for it. Um, I think there are some limitations to the, the amount of data that comes along with it. Um, just because of the nature of that format, I, I think that it's some basic information and then a link to the to the record. Um, GPX is kind of a holdover. It is the Garmin format, um, and that was added at some point as an option because people wanted to be able to pull the data down and load it onto their Garmins um, and then take that um, out in the field. So... So that is that's the reasoning for for that um, that format to be there. Um, the uh, um, Dave Shuler asked a question: Can anybody who uses EdMaps use these tools, or do you have to have specific rights? Anybody who's using EdMaps can use these tools. Um, you have to be logged in um, to be able to request the um the download um so that way you, you know any a mainly what we've run into is a a bot that is indexing the site um would hit those links and then go through every number um and and you know slow down the site for everybody else and so that's why those are limited to you having to be logged in to um to to do those requests but but the general query that's available to anybody is only publicly available data um, that, that you get returned in these queries. Um, we've got some requests for, for you know, a, mo a more advanced user to be able to get to get different types of data. Uh, and that's something we're looking into in the future where there would be different layer levels of access based on um, based on a user level of some sort and and. Um, where you make it pull data that you normally wouldn't be able to pull, but if you have the right permissions, then you would be able to. Other questions? Um, ways you would like to see this? Um, ways it works? Uh, 
Um, if, if we aren't getting other questions, maybe you could go back to that tools and training material page and just highlight if there's other, other tools on there that people might find handy. Yes, um, and, and we are um, in the process of revising this part of the page. Um, there's a couple of, there's, there's some outdated stuff on here that needs to be updated. Um, this handbook um, right here, which was a document we put together, I think almost 10 years ago, um, there is some really good information in it. Um, there, when you really, especially, you know, when you get into, um, you know, digital cameras part and, and how to take pictures and, and some just general information on, on, you know, going out in the field, um, you know, what you should carry and even some, some basics on developing a invasive species program. Um, we are going to be updating this in the next few months um, and, and printing some more copies of it. So uh, there will be a, a new version of this um, that will be done. It was, I guess it was done in 2011. Um, so look for that. Um, we, we put together a, um, a couple of quick flyers on, on how to use the smartphone apps. Um, we're going to continue to update those as as um, we update the apps. Um, we've got some data dictionary as well as bulk data um, information here, um, and a dictionary for for downloaded data, um, what the different fields mean, um, what kind of data that's stored in them. Um, we are putting together a series of of one page question and answer um, sheets that will be available on this page. Um, they are stuff like, how do I change my password? Um, how do I use the alert system? Um, how to report negative data is going to be one that's going to be available. Um, so so look, look over the next couple of weeks and then moving on, um, how uh, you'll, you'll see this page page get updated some more. Um, they're also on the main EdMaps Midwest page. Um, there are a handful of these training PowerPoints that were put together um, that are um, that you can go through um, and uh, you know step by step and see um, you know inf information on um, on how to do things. Um, the these will be added to that um, to the tools and training page. Um, some other things that um, that I, that can be useful is this find a location tool. Um, this is something I don't understand why it's not more built into Google Maps, um, but you know it shows you exactly where your mouse is. Um, you can zoom in. Um, and you can change the satellite view and, and you know, click and it will save the latitude and longitude of where you click. So if you need a latitude and longitude for something, um, this is a tool that, um, that is there for that. Um, we've also got tools to convert latitude and longitude from different formats, whether it's degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal degrees, um, or UTMs. Um, so I think what else is um, statistics page just kind of gives you some general overview of um, of what data is in in all of Ed Maps, um, and and this was a request that uh, that that somebody asked you know they wanted to be able to pull things out by congressional district so um, you know I guess if you wanted to. If you needed to report everything that was had been reported in um, Minnesota's first district, and and these are exotic and listed as a problem somewhere in the United States, but it's a it's a quick way um, you can narrow this down to just uh, just plants, or you can. Um, so here's the 294 plants that have been reported in Minnesota's first congressional district. Um, and the number of, and they're ranked by number of records. So, 
Um, you know, if you're you're asked for what what is what the problems are in a congressional district, then we added this quick way um, to be able to find that, and you just click on the map and um, and go from there. Um, so I think those are those are probably the most useful um, most useful tools on here. Um, other questions or comments uh, hi i work in northeast minnesota where we have some really large counties I'm wondering if there is a way, maybe this is more of an internal DNR question, to add sub-counties, or I noticed under the township query that there are no townships listed for a couple of the counties I work in. Uh, so I'm curious about adding those types of features. Yeah, probably what we, and I honestly cannot tell you if we have any of the Minnesota townships in um Um, and it may be that we don't. Um, I, I know we added there was there were some areas in in, in um, some of the New England states where they really wanted townships um, added, and I think that's where we primarily added added those in. But um, you know, if there is uh, if there's interest in adding townships in for for the whole state. Um, then that's something we we can do, and then you would be able to query it um, on this page as well. Um, so you know, I, I guess I would say think about the best way you would, how you would want to, um, whether it's township or, or what other um, way you would like to pull information out, and um, and and then you know, let me and let me and Laura know. And um, we, we can add that as a as a feature in the in the next year anyway. Okay, thank you. No problem. Yeah, and and I, I think, and I did not test this because I've forgotten that we had done it this way. Um, but we do have the option here um, where you can query and just show things on, um, that's what these light two layers, um, just show records that are on Minnesota DNR state lands or Minnesota DNR state waters. Um, and if I'm remembering correctly, that that was, you know, so if it if it didn't fall, you know, when you ran this query, if it didn't fall on, on that state land, then it the record would not, um, it, you know, it's limiting to that. I don't think we added a way where you could search for a specific state land or a specific um, water body um, as part of this. Um, but that may be something that would be useful to to look into in the future as well. And please, you know, if you run into problems, something doesn't work, then um, then then please let us know, and um, we can make sure that you know whether it's a query on this page or or a, a link that's not working somewhere. Um, you know, if we can't fix it unless we know about it. And you can in these other field, you know, any of these other fields beyond the state, county, um, country, township, um, you know, add multiple things. So if you were looking at um, if you were looking at the, uh, if I spelled that right, um, the bush honeysuckles, and you wanted. Um, um, to look at everything uh, 
you know, this the spa, this this listed just as the spa, and you also wanted to look at at Amber Honeysuckle, and and you could go on and add the um, the other ones to that as well, um, and just do a search for all of those. Then you can keep adding species here um, to fill in that um, um, you know to search, and it's, it's a good way to to search for multiple species at the same time and get a map of those species. Um, there are also synonyms in here as well. I, I don't know if you noticed that as I started typing that typing that in, but um, as I was typing it, there were um, synonyms that were showing up. Um, Let's see if I can find you an example. So like this is a synonym for this. And so you'll you'll get some of those synonyms um, as you um, as you look for things through this as well. And that's a fairly new new feature that was added. Anything else? And this was recorded, so um, we will make it available um, on the tools and training page um, and on the um, Bugwood YouTube channel as soon as I can get it converted and uploaded it. So you can refer back to it if you have any questions in the future. Great. Thanks so much. No problem. Thanks all y'all for joining us and um, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks.